In my hand are two legendary cameras from the manufacturer, Canon. This is kind of the beginning and the end of the DSLR flagship line from Canon. The EOS 5D was there for the death of film cameras and the birth of DSLR. And this, the 5D Mark IV, was there for the death of DSLRs, but the birth of the mirrorless systems that we use today. I'm not here to compare the prowess of these cameras. Yes, the camera that's 11 years newer shoots better photos. It actually shoots videos. But I have a belief that a lot of what you get from nicer, more modern, more professional cameras is better ergonomics. And I imagine a lot of the same engineers that made this camera also made this camera. And to take a look at what they wanted to develop, revolutionize, and refine over 11 years, I think it's just an interesting thing to take a look at as far as camera design is concerned. So the first thing to highlight, because this is the first thing you'll do with any camera, is to turn it on. And you'll see that the power switch is right here underneath the screen, both the off, on, and then this line that leads to this wheel. 90% of the time you're going to move it all the way to the line because that will power on this wheel which will allow you to adjust your aperture on the fly. Now holding the 5D Mark IV, we can see that they actually separated those functions. So the on and off button is way more out of the way as well as way harder of a button to press, but to be honest with you, not a huge difference. There is still a locking mechanism for if you don't wanna have this wheel in use, you know, you're scared you're gonna bump it. It's, they just separated that function. Most of the time, I don't think ever have I ever actually had this lock on. I always have this available to me to adjust the aperture. The second thing that you probably are going to do in any camera after turning it on is actually take a look at the menus. And let me adjust that so you can kind of see it off the reflection. Uh, this menu system is absolutely archaic, but, and it's probably hard to see, but there's a red, a blue, and a yellow there on that scroll wheel. It wasn't quite folders like we know it today, but they definitely broke up the function, whether it was adjusting the photo quality or certain settings into different sections. This one is old as it looks. It is totally still usable. If you need to format a card, it can do it. Um, I will say this camera caps out at eight gigabytes on a CF card. So even if you have a 64 gigabyte one like I do in here, it will not let you shoot more than eight gigabytes. Now holding the 5D Mark IV, if you couldn't tell, um, the menu system is a lot more in line with what you'll see in modern Canon cameras, where it's definitely folder sectioned off. Um, it's touchscreen enabled. This is actually pressable. And uh, again, it does a lot of the same stuff. There are more in-depth settings, but there's also more features on this camera. After you set the settings on any camera, the next thing you would do is start to use the camera for taking photos. So they have it kind of split up in two ways, essentially. On the left of the screen are all these buttons for manipulating or seeing information on the photos you've already taken. Uh, whereas the buttons on the right here are going to be for manipulating settings or adjustments to, for the photos you're about to take. This camera does have a joystick, which is actually really nice. A lot of modern cameras don't even have joysticks. And the autofocus in here is very rudimentary. It hardly deserves having a joystick, but it's definitely usable and Autofocus is always a good thing to see as an option on a camera. Now holding the 5D Mark IV, um, you can see, again, very similar layout. A lot of buttons on the left here for manipulating photos you've already taken. Um, I will say info kind of breaks that now that there's live view because it lets you adjust what you can see in the live view as you're taking photos, such as a histogram. Um, but most of the buttons on this right are absolutely still for adjusting what you're doing, whether you want to switch to taking a video right there with that little knob. Uh, start, stop for live view if you wanna pull up a live camera feed on the screen. As well as not just the joystick, but you also have a programmable button here. And Q um, is gonna let you very quickly jump into your settings. And again, this is touchscreen, so if I wanna adjust it like that, I absolutely can. There are a lot of buttons for still, I can't actually adjust that one but you still can adjust a lot of your buttons with physical buttons, like I'm adjusting that shutter with this wheel. That is almost identical on both cameras, but it is now allowing you to change these, not just on the top settings, but with the back screen as well. And I know I already showed you the screen, but real quick, I do just wanna show you what the same photo on both cameras will look like. Um, that looks atrocious, I apologize. So I did wanna show you how good the screens on the back of these cameras are. And on this one, I would say lack thereof quality. 
it's usable. Don't get me wrong. You can definitely see the composition of photos you shot. I've adjusted my camera video settings so that this looks legible. But I would say if indoors, it's fine. But if I'm outside shooting photos on a hike or something, um, there is no way I could ever possibly see the details of the photo I took. So most of the time, you're just looking at the histogram on here to see if you over or underexpose that photo. So this is now holding the 5D Mark IV. Um, first thing you'll notice is that that screen is significantly bigger. And what you might not be able to see through YouTube and all that compression is that this is significantly more accurate as far as color goes. Like this is what it looked like, whereas the other one had a really bad green tint to it. As well as, and maybe if I you know zoom in, which I can do because it's touchscreen, um, you can actually see that there's lines in the building. The other one, everything looks like watercolor, which I think is a good excuse to jump up to the top of this camera. And what I will say, um, still a screen here, and it's mostly the same layout as the other camera. It's really not that notable of a difference. And again, all the same buttons that you would traditionally expect on a digital camera, but they are slightly different than the Mark IV, really not that notable. Coming over to the Mark IV, you will see it is all the same buttons. The light did jump from up here to over here. And then what buttons, what functions are on these three is slightly different, but again, mostly the same. It's not until you come up here, you're gonna see uh, another button for adjusting autofocus settings is what mo most people probably use it for. Um, and I do believe I forgot to mention, you are also seeing a dedicated autofocus button right here um, compared to the only programmable button on the EOS 5D Classic. If we jump up to the front, this is definitely where there's the least amount of buttons on any camera, but this is the depth of field button. So this is what you would press if you wanna see through the viewfinder how your depth of field would be with your current aperture. Um, I don't use that a lot, but this button definitely doesn't invite me to do so. It's pretty out of the way for how I hold my camera as well as it's very small. And you can see there's a button right here for releasing the lens that you have on your camera. Now looking at the 5D Mark IV, that depth of field button is no longer here, but much bigger. And on the right hand, it's going to be kind of hard for me to show, but if you're holding the camera like that and you're actually not holding it against the table, your finger would rest right there. Um, allowing you to use that button way more frequently. I don't, but it gives you the option. Um, over here, again, same button, really hardly changed, but that's for releasing the lens. And someone's gonna crucify me. I have no idea what that plugin's for. I've never used it. Maybe one day I will, but it's there if you want it, all you mysterious front of camera cable lovers. Now looking at the 5D Classic, the ports on the left side here, um, I will say they're not terrible, but these little tabs here are way more annoying to get up and down. They just love to fight with me. Um, but if we take a look here on the left, um, you have a cable here for your flash as well as your remote. Oh my God, I bet that's the exact same thing. It looks so similar. Guys, I'm learning something on camera. Uh, I didn't know what the front of the 5D Mark IV was, but it looks so similar to that. It absolutely has to be the same thing. It's a remote shutter thing. So this on the 5D Classic, this would be if you're on a tripod and don't want any camera shake, uh, you can use this also for time lapses. So it just uh, it's a tool that plugs into the camera and kind of does some computing and shutter release for you. This is for a flash. I believe that's for flashes that don't have an onboard power system and need to pull from the camera. Um, the AV out options, the digital out options are pretty pitiful. I don't think I, I don't even remember what that USB standard is. I don't think I own a single one of it. And then video out, again, this camera does not do video. That would be for tethering, I would imagine. Now looking at the 5D Mark IV, couple more options. Some of these are already dated, even though this camera is about seven years old. Uh, again, a flash for a flash that can't power itself. These, again, these rubber gaskets feel so much better, so much easier. There's a mic and a headphone jack. So if you have up on the hot shoe here, a microphone, uh, that can be separate than your headphones. So you can monitor that audio while you record. And then here on the right, these are cables you won't see. I guess HDMI mini. I don't really shoot a lot of video but or tether, but if you do either of those things, these are the standards that you're gonna see on the 5D Mark IV. So taking a look at the last side here, I guess besides the bottom, 
Um, this is to get to the CF card slot on the handle. It gets the job done, but it's no engineering marvel to be sure. You get one CF card in here, and again, they cap that at eight gigabytes, which at 13 megapixels, it's not gonna fill up too quick, but one CF card. And then looking here at the bottom, traditional mounting points for a tripod, as I can see now, whoever had this before me definitely mounted it to a circular one. And again, I don't know who owned this before me, but you can see they pilfered some of the screws or they fell out, but I always laugh about that because I'm like, where, what, what would you do with those? Um, battery compartment, it's not a big deal. Pretty similar to what you'll see, but this is an older battery standard. I still have an original Canon battery, but uh, they don't make them anymore. So you're looking mostly at remanufactured, not the end of the world, but I like to see companies support their products. And back on the 5D Mark IV, you're gonna see, and the reason I say the other one is a little sad is this one right here just automatically pops in and out. It's not the end of the world, but uh, it's not addicting like this one is. And you're also gonna see you get two cards, CF and SD. Um, definitely not like the crazy new Canon or Sony cameras especially, but you get to shoot duplicates and uh, it just gives you peace of mind. Looking at the bottom, very similar situation. Normally I run mine with a capture clip, so that's like living right there, but newer battery standard and it also flips up automatically and uh, you're just on a newer battery standard that you can still buy from the manufacturer Canon. Is this the most in-depth comparison ever? No, but I do believe that ergonomics make a bigger difference to a camera experience than the actual raw specs. If a camera feels good to hold and it's easy to manipulate the settings, I'm gonna to wanna to take it with me to shoot more photos, as well as I'm just gonna shoot more photos, which will give me more photos to put in my portfolio. And surprise, surprise, in 11 years, Canon has made some improvements, and this is how they ended out the DSLR era. Not really as much of a comparison as much as just an evolution from what happened. It's exciting to see what's gonna happen with the EOS R line and where that's gonna end up in 10 more years. If you like that, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Leave a like, subscribe maybe, check me out on Instagram, or Better yet, go to my website if you want to see my full portfolio of my photos. That means the most to me, to be honest with you. But uh, appreciate you. Have a good one. Bye.